All right, how's it going YouTube? I trust you're all well. It's Tony Brown here and I am just want to do another walkthrough, another update in terms of how I'm getting on with my MPC Studio Black. So we're now two weeks in and I have made about, about 30 beats in total. A lot of the beats that I've made are just me learning the studio again, le learning the MPC. Um, some of them are keepers, some of them are, you know, I'll probably just scrap them. But what I want to do is just, again, give you an update in terms of the process that I use in terms of sampling, um, chopping samples and then laying them down and just sharing some of my learning as we go through. So let's do it. I've got a track here that I've made and this is this is probably my favourite track to date or one of my favourite tracks to date that I've made on here. So I'm going to play the sample and then I'll kind of talk you through the process I went through of making it. So let's go. Here's the sample. sampled nice rustic classic old deep soul gospel song and it just suited me to the ground so what I've done the the plan with this because it's a slow a real slow tempo um, very steady very clean what I decided to do was to chop it up um, on every single hi-hat so previously I probably would have chopped it up into bigger segments, but I'll show you with this what I've done. You can see there I've chopped this thing up into over a hundred segments. And what I've done, I chopped it on every single hi-hat. So if I zoom in, you'll see there it's chopped on every single hi-hat. Now, how many pieces is this? This is 115 segments. This has filled up every pad on the MPC. What you will see is in some of the segments I've doubled it up so that used to have a chop there but I've pieced it back together and the same here and the reason I've done that is because as I was laying down the sequence I could see that would be better suited if that was all one segment. So I'll play you what I've got in my program. So this is what I've got laid out and again like I said it's filled up every single pad on every single pad bank. So. to pad bank h no, we've got the no, line filled up no. so that's what i've got and again because of the tempo of the track i wanted to produce something of a similar kind of feel a similar kind of vibe laid back um so what i've basically done i just messed about with with the pads for a while what i didn't do with this track was i didn't rush into it usually i'm, you know, I'm just kind of vibe and throw something down with this one I was quite strategic you know I took my time and made or laid out the pieces in a way that I thought is best suited for the samples and it took me a while I'll be honest you know I was working in in four bar segments so I just had it rolling and for the first four bars 
I was finding the best arrangement, the best sequence for that four bars. And what I come up with was something like this. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. That's it. So it was. And that's what I'm saying. I just took my time and I thought, you know, what sounds good? Yeah. Okay, I like that. Yeah. What's next? Here we go. So I've got that piece. And that became the first few bars. that and then the next piece I knew I wanted to go up so I had to go to the next pad bank I So this is what I put together. I'll play the sequence. So here it is. Let me put it on uh, track actually. Uh, here we go. So let's take off the solo, get rid of that. And again, you can see I've only used one, two, three, four, five, five tracks. So one thing I did do, which I will show you, was I put some effects on the entire program. So previously what I probably would have done was put an effect on each each pad, just so I got more control over what sample's doing what. But because I knew I was going to use all the, all the majority of the pads in the program, I just put the effects on the entire program. So on this one I've got um, a chorus which gives it that, that nice full feel. Then I've compressed it, I've put a vintage compressor on here. And just played about with the settings on that. Put a little delay on there. Very small though, very slight delay. Don't know anything too much. And then what I have done is I've filtered it. I've put a low pass filter on there to get rid of some of the crackle off the top you know you do like a bit of crackle every now and then but this one was it was a bit rough when i sampled it so I just took, took a bit of the top end off again just to give it that rustic feel so once i'd laid down the main sequence Again, listening to the sound of that. I wanted a drum kit that suited that sound. So I went and sampled a very classic drum kit, which was that Al Green. I don't even know what the, what the song's called, but it's that Al Green kit. Uh, let's see if I can find it on here, actually. Let me close this off. That's something I've realized as well. Again, just to share this, I've been working with this open all the time. I didn't actually realize that you can close it. So I've been battling for screen space over here, trying to squeeze in and out of, of this little section here. And I didn't realize, oh, you can close that page. Duh. So um, let's have a look. Programs, drums. Here we go. Al, Al Green Break. There we go. This is it. <laughs> Very 
famous drum break. A lot of people have used it. When I heard the, the sample, I knew I wanted that break because it suited the sample. Uh, and then, like I said, I chopped out all the snares. So again, just go back, you'll see I've chopped it up into segments just using, I didn't use manual. I used, um, initially I used threshold to chop it and then went to manual and done my own little changes in there. And then I've pulled out all of the rim shots and laid them out on the pads. So I used slice to pad. So I'd find the rim shot I wanted and then I would use slice to pad and put it on the pad I wanted. So again, if I go back to that program, I've got six variations of the, the rim shot. And I've done the same with the hi-hats as well. So you'll hear there. Um, I've got six different hi-hats. And then when I was playing the, um, the pattern, I was just randomizing it just to give it a bit of a, a real sound. Um, what else did I do? Uh, that's it really. Oh, so what I've done with this one as well, um, let me play, let me play you up to, up to there then. So we've got the, got the sample. <laughs> see the drum pattern real simple just keeping it nice and smooth following the the sequence the sample sequence and I kind of felt like as I was making it, it had a bit of a, a reggae feel you know kind of that um, bit of a reggae vibe old school classic reggae that I was raised on you know the stuff my dad used to play so when I come to drop the bass line in I wanted to incorporate that so with my bass line as well this is an old trick I used to do back in the day um, let me go to my bass program. So where are we? Bass, uh, bass, bass, bass. What I've done with my bass is I've got some of you, this may be standard for some of you. I don't know, but I'm just sharing. Um, I actually got a kick, a kick drum and chopped right the way down to one single wave in that kick drum so um if i show you another kick you'll, you'll be able to get what i'm saying so if i go to drums go to the kick here uh, you'll see the kick is made up of a series of waves what i've done i zoomed right in and just grabbed one of these waves here or maybe two of these waves and then exported it and created this So that's just that looping. And it sounds a bit rough, sounds like a bit of a, a lead pad or something from a synthesizer. So then what I've done, I threw that in the program. Uh, where am I? Uh, bass, where is it? There we go. Threw it in a program, put a filter on it. I use the old MPC filter, filtered it down. Um, what you have to do is loop it as well, so make sure it's looped. Uh, yeah. And also make sure that this is on, note on, rather than one shot. And there's my bass line. Just made that myself. What I could actually do is layer it as well. But for now, that was fine. And let me play what I played with that. So, here it is. So this is everything together now.
reggae feel. And that's it, real simple. Then what I wanted to do is create a chorus section. So what I'd done was rather than just dropping the chorus on a separate track, I used the vocals out of the same sample. So it was already laid out on the pads. So if I go through the pads here, you'll hear him say here. So he says in, within the sample, he says I am a soldier and it's within the pattern. I am a soldier, God in my gosh. And that kind of helped to shape the concept of how this song's going to go. So this song's called Soldier. Um, and he's basically saying, I am a soldier. I'm going to stand up. And it's about basically fighting for what you believe in. So what I've done was created a new sequence specifically for the chorus. And rather than like usually what I do, what I would have done was took out those vocals out of the sample or resampled them, filtered them, got rid of the bass and then layered that. But I like the way it felt when I used when I messed about with those pads. I'm, I'm going to stand up. I like the way it sat within, um, within the sequence. So what I've done, I just replayed it, but use those pads. So let me show you. Uh, you can kind of see I'm still finding my way around. Uh, take out the bass. Here we go. Georgia. simple one other thing which you're probably all already aware of but if not i do want to share it is in terms of the uh where's my, here we go so the kicks um i have layered the kick drum so i've got three kicks all playing at the same time and that's simply done by selecting your main kick which is that one and then I've got another kick there just to give it a bit of top end I want to give it that kind of authentic feel and then I use that one to give it some bottom end and then I've just laid them up and the way you do that is in program if you go to your program edit and you basically just do uh, simultaneous play here and then so you hit the pad you want as your main one and then you'll tell the program to play another pad so in this case it's playing pad um, b3 it's actually not even playing that one i thought it was so that's it and you can lay out as many sounds as you want uh, as it stands this can play um, four different sounds if you want to you can also make the same pad mute another sound um, which I haven't really messed with yet but and I've done the same I think with the snares I'm not sure I've done the same no I haven't but what you want to do if you want if you wanted to give your your snares or your rim shots a bit more body again you could just get another snare on a different pad layer it and just tell this which pad you want it to trigger which is really useful. Um, what else have I done? Oh, so in terms of that kick drum as well, I filtered that as well. So I use the MPC filter and just filtered that down because the focus with this pad is just to give it some bottom end to give the, the kick some thud. 
So that's it. Hopefully you found it useful. Hopefully you enjoyed the beat. I'd love to hear your comments on how you think the beat was sounding. I think it's knocking personally. I do like it. Um, like I said, it's my second week. So I'm just getting to grips with using this thing again. Um, I have made a number of beats. Like I said, a lot of them are probably not really keepers. They're just um, what I've used to, what I've created whilst learning the software and the hardware. So yeah, hopefully you found it useful and I look forward to hearing your comments. If you do like it, thumbs up and you can also subscribe as well. I'll be putting out a number of videos because I am enjoying this process. As I learn something, I'll just share it. Um, and I'll see you again in another video. All the best. God bless and take care.